Two giant boxes are shown here, driven atop large flatbed trucks. A closer look reveals a police escort in the foreground to the left. It turns out that not all top-secret planes fly at night to be mistaken for UFOs. Instead, in this case, it was determined that driving classified aircraft between airports was the best way to keep it a secret before assembly. This 1962 photo, saved by Lockheed Skunk Works mechanic Dorsey Kammerer, captures the classified transportation of two top-secret shipments between Burbank and Palmdale, California. These trucks held A-12 planes, at the time the most technologically advanced of reconnaissance aircrafts. Project Oxcart to understand how these planes came to be, and why they were transported in such a fashion, it's crucial to go back to the beginning of the classified Project Oxcart. Project plans called for the development of a new stealth aircraft, after modifications failed to decrease the radar cross-section of the increasingly vulnerable U-2 plane. This new plane, a reconnaissance aircraft, would be built for the Central Intelligence Agency by Lockheed Skunk Works at its complex in Burbank, California. However, once it was constructed, the new plane needed to be transported over land to the base where it was to be tested without unveiling its secrets to passerby or spies. That was easier said than done, given the enormous scale and awkward dimensions of the aircrafts. Building in Burbank At the Lockheed facility in Burbank, Dorsey Kammerer oversaw the construction of the carriage system for planes, while Larry Bohannon was in charge of leading the engineering team. The project designer was Kelly Johnson, famous today for producing the first family of operational Mach 3 planes. The development of the team of professionals at the peak of their field needed to be kept under wraps from spy satellites and enemy eyes, which is why transporting the planes presented a significant challenge. The first phase of building a suitable transport consisted of equipping a pickup truck with extension poles as long and tall as the main transport carriage trailer. The carriages or trailers themselves would be oversized and therefore required special travel permits. The airplane had to be brought in riding on its landing gear. This ensured that the airplane structure could be transported safely on normal roads. It was towed into place on the carriage, with its removable cover framework, fabric, and solid material all being assembled on the trailer. The two carriage boxes were specially built to carry the pre-assembled airplanes. The larger box carried the main part of the airplane, while the smaller box was fitted to carry the removable outer wing, or pieces known as nacelles. It also carried the rudders, forward fuselage section, and other assorted airplane parts. The boxes had a steel chassis to hold the tow system and the carriage wheels. The larger box was 105 feet or 32 meters long and 35 feet or 10.6 meters wide. Together these would be able to secretly transport the aircraft. That box also featured steerable tall wheels on either side of the carriage. Both trailer boxes were designed to be towed by Lockheed Furbis tractors, both of which can be clearly seen in the photo. Mapping the route. The entire route had to be mapped well ahead of time, given the sheer scale and awkward dimensions of the objects in transit. Obstacles on routes that could thwart the easy movements of the carriage boxes had to be thoroughly considered and, where needed, mitigated. As such, steps were taken to remove any impediments in the way of the transit convoy. For example, in some places roadside barriers such as signs and poles were repositioned, or in some cases even moved. Some trees along the way had to be pruned or even cut down, while roadside hills had to be cleared in certain spots. Planning for the route began in 1959, and only three years later, by February 1962, it was finally ready for the first transport. Stopover places along the route were also planned and coordinated for, as well as places where the crew could stay overnight. Highway patrols at the ready. This was no ordinary highway trip, and the convoy would tread across two states, California and Nevada, hence why the assistance of and oversight by their respective highway patrols was requested. It was the best way to ensure safe and successful transportation of these highly sensitive airplanes. The two state highway patrols were crucial in removing traffic and bystanders along the route. The convoy was only permitted to travel on midweek days, with no movement allowed on weekends or public holidays. It's often assumed that the photos were taken by the California Highway Patrol, but they were probably taken by Lockheed, both for posterity and insurance purposes. Alternative Plane While the assumption is that the loads in this photo depict the aforementioned A-12 reconnaissance plane, the payload has never been officially confirmed, and it's very possible that it was in fact another, even more secretive plane that is seen in transit. 
That hypothetical plane could have been the SR-71, a large, state-of-the-art spy plane from the early 1960s that was designed to fly quickly and stealthily at high altitudes over the Soviet Union. It would be the fastest manned military aircraft of its time. Few military planes had more mystique and allure around them than the SR-71. Ex-aviator Brian Schul, who flew the SR-71, had this to say about the mythical plane in his book Sled Driver, quote, We were the fastest guys on the block and loved reminding our fellow aviators of this fact. People often asked us if because of this fact it was fun to fly the jet. Fun would not be the first word I would use to describe flying this plane. Intense, maybe. Even cerebral. The possibility of the plane being an SR-71 is feasible because the stretch of freeway is on the way to Palmdale, and it's known that there were three trips made between Burbank and Palmdale that carried the first SR-71s ever built. The other destination. As for the aforementioned A-12 reconnaissance plane, there were 18 trips in total between the Lockheed facility in Burbank and its final destination in Nevada. The main hangar complex at what is sometimes called Homey Airport, or Groom Lake, located inside the Nevada Test and Training Range, was the final destination. The area is known by another, much more famous name, a name that evokes mystery, countless theories, and conspiracies. Area 51. Area 51. 